Good morning. I want to welcome you to St. Mark's United Methodist Church. I'm so glad that you're here with us today. I hope this is a place where you feel God's presence in your life. I am Katie Eichler. I am pastor of discipleship here at St. Mark's. I am one of three pastors and the only one to avoid a post-Easter COVID diagnosis. So the, our other pastors are sad to be here, sad not to be here with you today, uh, and they, but they're on the mend and, and well, and will be back with us next, next week. But they were very sad to miss uh, our CDC Sunday, which is today, the day that our day school students come and sing to us their chapel songs. So I know many of you are here for that today, and I'm so glad. Uh, CDC Chapel is my very favorite part, one of my very favorite parts of the week, and this is a joy when everybody else gets to see what I delight in every single week. So thank you for being here. Uh, I'm going to draw your attention to some things going on in the life of the church. Uh, and as I do that, I want to invite you to fill out a connect card. They're in the pew pocket in front of you, and you can give us a little bit more information about you to let us know that you are here today and let us know how we might be in prayer for you this week. You can drop those in the offering plate when it comes to you later in the service, or you can fill it out digitally if that's how you would prefer there is a QR code in the back of your bulletin, or you can uh, type in stmarks.love into your browser if QR codes are your enemy. Uh, that's also a way that you can do that. Um, and also at that link tree, there are lots of helpful links. You can give your offering online, you can sign up for our newsletter, uh, and see other signups that are going on in the church. For example, one that we have going on right now is, this is the last week to sign up for Learning in Pairs which is a wonderful faith formation opportunity that I would invite you to be a part of. It's been a great blessing in my life. It's a chance to sign up uh, either with a partner or to get paired with a new partner. Uh, and each week we will read one of the resurrection stories. You'll do it on your own time. You can do it in person or over FaceTime or on Zoom, whenever works for you and your partner. Uh, we'll, you check in with one another, you read the scripture and ask and answer questions with each other. You say how you can pray for one another, uh, and then you pray and you go on about your day. And, and uh, it's a great gift. If you're uh, very familiar with studying scripture, it's wonderful for you. If you've never studied scripture, it's wonderful for you. It's really accessible for anybody. So I hope that that is something that you will think about signing up for. It's also fundraising season in the life of nonprofit world, and we have three fundraisers for you to consider that are in your bulletin. Uh, this week there is the first one, and that is the Wesley Community Center fundraiser, which is a ministry partner of ours on the near north side that does many different things uh, to, to be in a community on, on the near north side right across the highway. But also our CDC fundraiser is one that I would like to draw a special attention to. It's coming up at the end of this month, and the CDC has done an amazing job over the last few years to work on fundraising for a new playground uh, for us at St. Mark's. Our playground is getting older by the day uh, and it's getting harder and harder to repair when it breaks and we're really excited for the work that they've done and uh, the vision that they have to breathe new life into that space. Uh, they've already done a really good job of fundraising part of that and we would love for that, that's work that can be phased, but we would love for this be the year that we help them just reach to the full end of their goal so we can replace that playground all at once. So I hope that you'll consider uh, being a part of that fundraiser. You can act, buy tickets and go to the event or just donate to the cause and both of those are absolutely wonderful ways to support the school. And then the last one is uh, our FAM Bingo fundraiser, which is another ministry partner of ours, and that, uh, that is on the 29th. All of those tickets are available on the link tree to be signed up for. Uh, this is also the time in the service where we check our milestone notebook, which is the prayer journal for our church. And I don't believe there is anything new in there today, but it is always there for you to write uh, prayer concerns or, or milestones in your life and your family's life. But we know that you come with many things on your heart, uh, both, both joys and concerns, and so we bring all of those to God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence in this place. Let your spirit fill us so that we might hear what you have to say to us today, so that we can take it into the world as we go. God, we know that you hold our joys and our concerns in the palm of your hand, that you know them intimately, and that you care for them with love. God, thank you. 
God, let this day be a gift to you and a glory to you. And let us come to know your love through our time together today. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, I invite you to stand and sing together with us number 304 in your red hymnals. trust God to hear our prayer, and with confidence we confess our sins now before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Believe the good news. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Well, friends, because we have two different groups of kids right now, and we have our CDC kids that are kind of come sing for our children's sermon, we're going to invite our other kids that will go to children's church down now as we pass the peace, and they'll sit here for the, uh, the scripture reading and then be able to have up close and personal seats uh, to see our CDC kids sing. And while we do that, let us pass the peace of Christ with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. Our first reading is from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, Even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that that though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. 
And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of God for the people of God. And now we'll invite our CDC uh, kids to come. They're going to come forward and come and sing their songs uh, with us. Maybe somebody look out there and make sure they're on their way. Uh, but I want to tell you a little bit about uh, what we do at the CDC chapel every week. So uh, on Wednesdays at 10.15 is the most joyous 15 minutes this, this sanctuary sees all week. They're much more expressive than you are on a regular Sunday morning. Uh, which I hope that you'll get to see. And so uh, we, we come each week to this time and they uh, sing songs, they hear stories from scripture and other books that help us to know how to be good neighbors and show God's love. And um, I get calls all of the time saying, what is this that my kid is saying? Like, are they singing these words? And I can understand because my kid went here too and I was the one teaching the songs and I didn't always understand what he was saying. So I, I'm, I'm grateful for you guys to get to see that and happy to welcome them up here for us to sing together. Okay, friends, are you ready to sing your songs? Yeah, can we start out? Can we sing This Is The Day? Are you ready? Ready? This is the day. loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Good job, friends. Good job. <laughs> Can we sing, Do You Know That God Is Love? Yeah? Ready? Can you sing the fuzzy caterpillar? Can I see your caterpillars? Ready? Ready? The fuzzy caterpillar.
Okay, our last song is the favorite song, and when we don't sing it, I get ugly looks, right? Can we sing? Exactly, building up the temple. Exactly, yeah, let's sing building up the temple. Ready? Building up the temple. Excellent job, Brent. Okay, wait, pause where you are. Can I see your party hats? Can I see your rocket ships? Can I see your bunny ears? Can I see your praying hands? Can we say, dear God? Thank you for this day and for our school and for our teachers, and for their church. We love you. Thank you for loving us. Help us love each other. Amen. Great job, friends. OK, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know, wait. What we're going to do is we're going to let our children's church kids go first with, uh, with Miss Sydney to go to children's church. And then these guys are going to go, and they can be uh, picked up after the service on the playground, okay? Children's Church will come back. These guys pick them up on the playground. But let us all stand and sing in our red hymn, hymnal number 162. Please remain standing as you are able for the reading from the Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors were locked where the disciples were 
for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name, the Holy Gospel. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. A few years ago, one of the classes in the CDC had a pet turtle, uh, whose name was, of course, Shelly, because that is the best name there is for a turtle. And uh, during Lent that year, sadness came upon the school because poor Shelly died. Uh, as this was the first encounter that many of our little ones had with death, we did all that we could to help them hold their grief. We, there were lots of hugs and lots of conversations. There was a burial. There were eulogies because Shelley was a very good turtle after all. And as time passed, Shelley was remembered fondly, but we all thought, okay, that went pretty well. That was okay. That is until we realized the one mistake that we made. See, what comes after Lent is Easter. And so as there were shouts of Jesus is risen, hallelujah, immediately they were followed with, and what about Shelley? <laughs> She's going to rise too, right? We learned a lesson. When uh, class pets go on to glory, they go to be with God. They do not go to be with Jesus. It just makes things a little less complicated. The longer I work in the church, the more that I talk to people about their experience of faith, the more convinced I am that for some people, belief comes easy. And for others, it is much harder. That some people have no struggle with the mystery and that their imagination fills in the same holes that, others ca that cause others to struggle with the lack of evidence or certainty. And I truly believe that this is not some sort of marker of strong or weak faith or good or bad discipleship. It's not a negative thing. It's simply how we're wired. And I believe that at least in part because of my experience with three and four year olds at CDC Chapel. Right now, we have a pre-K kid who questions everything. There's not a week that goes by that she doesn't try to stay after to ask me questions. Uh, and some of the ones that I've gotten recently, they all, they all have like come with like a real look of skepticism on her face uh, and maybe an underlying layer of judgment as well. Uh, the ones I've gotten recently are, how do you know this stuff that you're teaching us? And who taught it to you, and where did you learn it, and when did you learn it, and many, many more. I'm quite convinced that next week she's going to ask me to cite my sources, and I think within a couple of weeks I'm probably going to be asked to produce my ordination credentials for her, uh, just so she can be sure that I'm legit. Uh, so we have a real Thomas in our midst when we gather at CDC Chapel each week. This is the way that the story is told in the book of John. Early on the first day of the week when it was still dark out, Mary Magdalene went to visit the tomb. 
But when she got there, she was surprised to find that the stone was rolled away. And so immediately she ran to tell the disciples, who also ran, two of them at least, back to the tomb with her to see if what she said was true. And they went in one at a time to find the linen, which had previously been wrapped around Jesus' body, to be folded neatly with no sign of him. It makes a point to say that one of them believed when they saw that, but both of them left and went back to their homes. And when Mary, who was still mourning outside the tomb, looks in herself, she finds two angels that speak with her. And she tells them that somebody has taken her Lord and then turns around to find a gardener, or who she thinks is a gardener, who she speaks to him and says, where can I find Jesus? But when the man calls her name, she realizes that this is Jesus, the risen Christ standing in front of her, talking to her. And she's overjoyed, and she goes to tell the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And then it's later that night, that evening, that the doors of the house where the disciples are gathered were locked for fear that the same people whose actions had led to the crucifixion of Jesus would be coming for them next. It didn't stop Jesus, though. All of a sudden, he was present in the room, speaking to, into the silence, thick with grief and anxiety, peace be with you. In John's story, which mirrors Matthew's Great Commission and Luke's Pentecost, Jesus breathes his Holy Spirit into the room, onto his friends, and gives them instructions for what is to come next. And as they inhale his breath, his spirit is being inhaled. It's as if their souls are reinflated and they're able to hope once again. With his presence, their despondency transforms into joy and hope for what is to come. And it's a good story, but Thomas wasn't there for it. And it does seem rather unbelievable. And so he says, if I'm going to believe this thing that you tell me when they get back together, that I'm going to need a little bit something more to make sure that his friends are not being falsely hopeful or delusional. It doesn't matter how much Thomas might have wanted to believe it. It seems unbelievable. People don't rise from the dead. And his rational thought would not let him get past that fact of nature. If he could see the wounds from Christ's crucifixion with his own eyes, touch them even, then he might believe. And this is where he gets this moniker, the label of doubting Thomas that sticks with him throughout time. But don't let that make you believe that he's any less of a disciple, any less devoted than the others, John is the only gospel writer who fleshes out his personality at all beyond just being in a list of the 12 disciples. Earlier in the story when Jesus wanted to head to the home of Lazarus who had died, everyone else was deeply concerned about the safety of going into enemy territory and they tried to talk Jesus out of going, but not Thomas. Nope, Thomas said, let us go that we might die too with a profound confidence and devotion that none of the rest of them had. And so maybe it isn't a surprise that when everyone else is locked up in a room, scared, maybe being even a little bit cowardly, that Thomas wasn't there. He was out and about. We don't know where, but he wasn't there. And so at the, earlier as well, at the Last Supper, Jesus told them all not to be afraid because, he, because they knew where he was going. It was Thomas that was the one that was brave enough to ask the question that was on everybody's mind. Lord, we don't know where you're going, in fact. How can we know the way? I love the way that the poet Malcolm Geit describes Thomas. He says, courageous master of the awkward question. You spoke the words that others dared not say and cut through their evasion and abstraction. The body of Christ is made up of many parts and people of all sorts, and it's a gift to have people who ask the clarifying questions among the bunch. They're skeptical of groupthink, and they're deliberate to discern whether it's the spirit that is really guiding our next steps, or if it's emotional and a fervor and excitement. They're the ones that aren't willing to just skim over the parts that are hard in favor of the ones that are easy. They're ones that are willing to look at the wounds of Christ and the wounds of our world and not turn away awkwardly looking for more pleasant sights to see. 
Filled with doubt in the face of his friend's certainty, it was bravery for sure that brought Thomas back to that room one week later. And showing up, sure enough, he was there to witness a miracle. He didn't walk away because of his questions. He continued to eat meals with them and pray with them and be gathered together. He didn't run away from the risk that surrounded them. He stayed. I'm a fan of Thomas, if you can't tell. And I'm a fan of those who are wired like Thomas. And I could go on and on and defend their honor and encourage them to live into who God has called them to be and made them to be and wired them to be. But then we'd miss out on some of the other gifts that this story gives us. Because not everyone has the benefit of having the reaction to their questions that Thomas got from his community of other disciples. We've been watching a lot of old seasons of Survivor in our house, because why not? There's 44 seasons of Survivor on Paramount Plus if you just need a lot of things to just get you by, if you're, if you're running out of shows. 44 seasons. Uh, and I've been very interested in the strategy that different players take. One thing's clear though, if you get on the outs with your tribe, your days are numbered. If any, everyone in your alliance is saying one thing and you question it or you offer a different reality, the chances go through the roof that Jeff Probst will be telling you the tribe has spoken, it's time to go and snuffing out your torch. Sometimes that's what happens to people in church too. And I hope it hasn't happened to you. But if it has, I'm really, really sorry because it shouldn't have. And even if you weren't completely rejected, but maybe it felt that way when people answered your questions that you had pondered for hours or days or months or even years got answered just far too quickly. Shutting them down with a, that's not biblical, or a quick answer to give you a pat and certain answer for questions that are swirling with complication and nuance. The disciples give us this gift in this story of showing us a different way. They didn't kick him out because he was unsure. They sat with him in his disbelief. They acknowledged that resurrection isn't rational. And so it makes sense if it doesn't really make sense, but it doesn't make it untrue. Because of their love for him and their acceptance of his questions, Thomas was still there with them when Jesus showed up again. And he was able to experience his presence, not just in hearsay. Jesus appears again with the same words, peace be with you. And then in an act of omnipotent mercy, he walked straight to Thomas and gave him exactly what he needed. Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. And with great kindness in his eyes, he said, don't doubt, believe. And Thomas responded in faith immediately, my Lord, my God right in the midst of his community of people who had been sitting with him the whole time. Another gift that this passage gives us is that when Jesus returns and comes straight to Thomas, he does it in the presence of this community. He doesn't go to find Thomas on his own. It's not like he went to see the disciples and he was like, oh, they're missing one. I wonder where he is. I bet he went to the store. I'll meet him in the parking lot. No, that's not what happened, right? He doesn't go find Thomas on his own. He waits and he comes back to them when they're all together. This is not a private encounter. Our faith is supposed to be experienced in community, not individually. I like the way that Lutheran pastor Nadia Boltz Weber puts it when she says this way, so when she says this. I don't think that faith is given sufficient and sufficient quantity to individuals necessarily. I think it's given in sufficient quantity to communities. The same with like when God will not give you more than you can bear. I don't think God will give you more than a community can bear together. And we've individualized faith so much that in a way it makes it inaccessible to people because they're like, I don't believe this. Like the Apostles' Creed, I can't say the creed because I don't know if I believe every line of the creed. And she says, well, practically nobody believes every line of the creed. But in a room full of people, each line of the creed, somebody believes it. And so together, we're covered, right? It's not your creed, it's the church's creed. And the beauty of it, this thing is really about community. It's always been about the body of Christ. And the other gift of community 
is it means that we can all hold each other's wounds. The body of Christ, that is the church, is full of open wounds of all sorts. And some of them are big and gnarly, and some of them are hidden and less able to be seen. But as Jesus shows his hands to Thomas, he shows us that these are not things that we have to hide away and keep from each other. That showing our woundedness is part of being the body of Christ. And that nothing will keep Jesus, the risen Christ, from meeting us exactly where we are. Not locked doors, not questions, not doubts, not walls that we build, not apathy, not any sort of wounds, nothing. Just as Jesus met Mary in her grief and the disciples in their fear and Thomas in his doubt, he meets you exactly right where you are and offers you just what you need. He says, this is my body broken for you. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Taste and see. See my love for you. In his wounds and his scars, he breathes new life and new hope into ours. And that is good news. Happy Easter. As a response to all we have heard, let us stand and affirm our faith together, as printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. As our ushers come forward to receive our offering, let us go to God in prayer. Holy One, you are the God of us all, who created us each differently to bring you glory. Blessed are those among us who ask good questions. Help us be a community that believes together in your goodness and in the new life you give to all of us. Let our offerings today be our songs of praise and thanksgiving in response to the God who loves us and meets us right where we are. Bless these gifts and transform them into healing for the wounded, hope for the disheartened, courage for the frightened, and faith for the embittered. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Friends, please remain standing and let us join in the great thanksgiving which is printed in our bulletins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, and now we are your people." declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ who called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. You'll be invited at the direction of the ushers to come forward 
uh, and either kneel or stand at the altar rail to receive the elements, which are bread and grape juice. If you need gluten-free elements, just let us know and we'd be happy to provide those for you. Uh, you're welcome to stay and pray as long as you like or to light a candle over here in this prayer station and then return to your seat for a time of silent prayer. This is not St. Mark's table. This is not the table of the United Methodist Church. This is the Lord's table, and all are welcome to come and taste and see the goodness of our God.
Friends, let us join together in the prayer after receiving that is printed in our bulletin. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Well, friends, if today is the day that you would become a member of St. Mark's United Methodist Church, we invite you to come up during this last hymn so that we can offer you the vows of membership. But the invitation to discipleship is always for all of us. And so it is my hope that this week that you will give space for your own questions and know that Jesus greets them and welcomes them and that we will be a community that welcomes all of us, no matter our questions or our wounds. Let us stand and sing together number 318 in our red hymnal. let us go into the world and be God's people, those who show love to all that we meet. Go in peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.